Hello everyone. This is the 15th part of the story, Percy Jackson, the God of Magic. Chapter 71. After the quest, I will never talk about, ever, I went back to Valhalla alongside Thor, where Odin, Frigg and Hestia were waiting for us with a massive feast. I suppose, in the end, humiliating myself for a bit was worth it. After the feast, I decided to have a talk with Odin, about what to do now that I had even more power than before which was harder to control, to which, he simply said, stop training so much, and take a vacation with Hestia, under the excuse that I needed to relax a bit. The weirdest thing was, he kept on saying China was great this time of the year, over and over again, almost as if he wanted me to go to China, but why though? So. I hummed, Odin told me to take a vacation, and I have a feeling he wanted us to go to China, wanna come? I asked Hestia, who smiled at me. I would love to, but. Wouldn't it be dangerous for us? Hestia replied, a tone of uncertainty in her voice, I couldn't really blame her if Artemis and the others were still hunting us, a little vacation trip could end pretty bad. But regardless of the situation, Odin was right, we needed to relax. So far our lives had been nothing but a problem after the other, it will be fun, and besides, I'll keep an eye on everyone. I winked at her. Very well, Hestia smiled, her eyes beaming with newfound excitement, so where are we going, she asked, her smile warming my heart, showing already that the risk I was taking worth it. Well, Odin was pretty suspicious with his recommendation, I chuckled, taking a seat over her bed. He kept saying good things about China, so, call me crazy, but I think I would like to go there, at least to see what is all the fuss about, I stated, with a smirk. I haven't been there in a few hundred years, Hestia hummed, putting her index finger over her lower lip in a ponderous form, I think is a great idea, she concurred, if not, we can always teleport to another country, the perks of being a god. She smiled. We could try some food, and visit some local landmarks, I nodded, maybe Odin was onto something, then it's settled, let's go. I added with a smile as I jumped out of the bed and grabbed Hestia by the hips and lifted her up, let's go to China. Yeah, Hestia giggled, throwing her hands up into the air, as held her high. Well, I already have all I need, I chuckled, I got my travel Hestia, at that she chuckled, let's go, and with that, I teleported us out of Asgard, our destination, China. Godhood never ceases to amaze me, for some reason, I was able to speak Chinese, fluently, like the moment we arrived, I simply knew what everyone was saying, for me, I was simply speaking my native language, it was, simple. Hestia explained it was something all gods had, the power to understand, any mortal. Meaning my brain was now part translator, neat. As for the place, China was awesome, but still, I wasn't sure why would Odin want me to come here, I mean. Yeah. The place was great the locals were friendly enough with our clearly tourist asses, but besides that, it wasn't something that warranted Odin repeating I should go to China over 15 times in the span of a 5-minute conversation. I think after this, we should go to Japan, I would like to see the Sakura trees. If I remember correctly they are blooming this time of year, Hestia said, snapping me out of my long reverie, her smile wide and warm, for a brief moment making me forget we were on the run, but not today, today Hestia was happy, today I had taken her worries away. That sounds great, I nodded with a small hum, I could go for some ramen, I have always wanted to eat some real ramen to see if they taste better to the $1 version Walmart offers. That, is trash, Hestia stated, is like 80% salt, no flavor and bad quality noodles. Well, that's the only ramen I have eaten, I chuckled, so, not much to compare so far, for me, but if you say so. I will believe you, my lady, I bowed, for dramatic purposes. Hum, you better believe it, Hestia pouted, though, I am not gonna lie, feeling kinda insulted you never asked me for some ramen. Well, to be fair, everything you cook is delicious, so I never had a real desire or craving, I shrugged, 
Don't worry though, I'm pretty sure your ramen will be better than anything I can get in Japan. You better believe that. Hestia chuckled. It was good seeing her. My train of thought was abruptly interrupted as I felt a massive amount of magic energy appeared close to us out of thin air. It wasn't anyone from the Greeks or the Romans, but I knew for sure, whatever it was, it was a god, god damn it, I muttered, noticing Hestia herself had noticed the sudden change in the area. It seems the Chinese pantheon is here to greet us, Hestia muttered, her eyes narrowing at the general direction we had felt the power coming from. Was this what Odin wanted, for us to interact with the Chinese pantheon, if so, why? What could he possibly gain, or in this case, what could I possibly gain from it? Stay behind me, if things go south, I will teleport us out of here. Very well, Hestia nodded, holding my hand tight. What a surprise, someone chuckled, the echoes of his laughter reaching us, I did not expect to find two Greek gods here. We are having a vacation, is that against any rules, if so we weren't aware, whoever this god was. It was difficult to tell how strong he was, unlike Zeus whose magic power was like his personality, easy to read, or Odin whose power was cold and unmoving and clear to read, this unknown and his power felt like staring into the jungle, with no real way to say if the jungle was safe or more dangerous than ever. Don't get all grumpy kid. The unknown god chuckled, the name is Sun Wukong, nice to meet ya. Chapter, 72 I stared at the god with wary, his power what leagues above mine or Hestia, and even with him sounding friendly, his presence alone was more than enough to put at the edge, it was like staring at the personification of a beast, his power felt massive and wild, it was suffocating. Sun Wukong's anthropomorphic body was muscular and mighty, just with a quick glance I could easily tell, the many years of intense combat and survival the Monkey King had endured, hardening him into a terrifyingly strong fighter, his entire furry physique was covered in scars, a testament to the brutal adventures he had lived through, his bright golden crown rested around his head, barely below the hairline, but what really had me on edge was the dark and suffocating aura that clung tightly to. His very being, unlike Zeus or Odin, his aura was unrestrained, untamed, wild. Like an animal, waiting to pounce at me at any given moment. A pleasure to meet you, Sun Wukong, I smiled, forcing myself to not show any type of weakness. Hey, don't get all grumpy, Sun Wukong laughed, perhaps I was looking too much into his power, instead of evaluating his personality, I came here to greet ya, and well, because I have a small request. Nothing too big I assure you kiddo, the monkey king winked at me, fidgeting his staff around. What would that be? I asked, trying but miserably hiding my uncertainty in my voice. A spar, nothing more, Sun Wukong grinned as something akin to excitement flashed across his eyes, I want to fight you know. That your journey has just begun, so that I can see how much powerful you will be a thousand years from now, a spar? I suppose it could be beneficial to see how strong the Monkey King really is. I accept, I nodded, but I, we are currently hiding from some people, and a fight will probably let them know where we are, I added. Don't sweat it brat, Sun Wukong smiled, I know just the place where nobody will feel us, like you. I used to run from the gods, well, it was more along the lines of me, kicking their asses, but… I understand the feeling somewhat. Is fighting really necessary? Hestia whispered, holding my hand tight. It's alright, it's just a spar, I replied, it wasn't like something terrib. No no no, I will not invoke you, Murphy. Sun Wukong lead us to a shrine where we teleported to an empty forest, I felt no magic but our own, impressive, I muttered, realizing the place was 100% artificial. Now, let's see how strong you are now. Sun Wukong loudly proclaimed, and this made me wonder, why did he want to spar with me so badly? Was it really to gauge my progress over time, was his reason so, basic? All right, I sighed, staring at him, 
I knew this battle was lost the moment I agreed to fight him, so with that in mind, I decided I might as well go all out to see how much I had improved, here I go, I muttered, letting all my power break free as I dashed at him, my hands covered in green flames which were composed entirely out of Tartarus flames. If I had to give a number, I would say I threw around a few thousand punches right there in the span of a second, pushing myself to the very limit with my new powers, and yet. With almost a casual wave of his hand, the Monkey King dispelled and blocked the attacks with a single hand. His body then blurred as he began to unleash an assault on me, one I didn't even see, I knew I was outclassed. But this was a bit out of my expectations, even with Artemis I was able to see her attacks, but his? I didn't even know from where or with what he was hitting, only that he was doing it. Sun Wukong's assault ended with what I assumed was a kick, and me flying to a nearby mountain, fuck, I chuckled. That monkey was too strong, taking a deep breath, I jumped out of the mountain, and stared at him, thinking, if hand-to-hand -hand combat was a big no, then, perhaps I would have better results with long-range attacks, maybe fo. My casting was stopped, as Sun Wukong's body blurred out of sight and appeared in front of me, his eyes closed for a brief moment before he opened them, and I could see he was looking down at me curiously, no to be a party pooper, but, if your attacks take this long to cast, you might as well kill yourself, he stated, and while it pained me to admit it, he had a very good point. A very fair point, I chuckled, exploding the incomplete spell on his head, which apparently did nothing, as he simply stood there, unfaced by the attack, this is very unfair for me. Rui Jingu Bang, Sun Wukong muttered, pulling the magical staff he was carrying off his back, and then proceeding to point it at me, expand. I didn't even see what happened next, in the time it took me to blink. I was from what I felt thousands of miles away from Hestia and Sun Wukong, my body shaking, with possible trauma, nimbus cloud, in shock, my head snapped around to see, Sun Wukong floating above me, as what I can only describe as a biblical storm formed above him, you want to fight Zeus, you need to resist attacks like this. With the snap of his fingers, a thunderous and blinding explosion descend upon me, and everything went black. Two hours later. I woke up, in a crater, with Hestia beside me glaring at the Monkey King in mild anger, hello, there, I muttered, noticing right away I was missing an arm and a leg, great. Don't look at your body like that kid, Sun Wukong chuckled, you are a god, regenerating limbs is easy, just wait for a bit. He winked, I have to say, you did best than I imagined but in all honesty, you are still too fresh to fight Zeus. I knew that much, I narrowed my eyes at him. Now, if you want. I am always willing to train you, Sun Wukang offered, which made Hestia glare at him even harder, sorry fire lady, I know you are mad with me, but believe me when I tell you, that was me going easy on him, he chuckled rubbing the back of his head sheepishly and right at that moment I knew with certainty, Sun Wukong was stronger than Zeus, then again I was making assumptions, but I had my suspicions before about how strong he was, but now, it was clear, the Monkey King was a monster. I will take that offer, this was an opportunity one would not throw away. Chapter 73 After my humiliating defeat at the hands of Sun Wukong, Hestia and I returned to our little vacation in China after I regenerated my limbs, with Sun Wukong promising to contact me with the when and where he would train me. This spar had shown me how far behind I was behind all the top gods, if Zeus was around his level, I would die trying to fight him, which meant I had to play my cards right, meaning training was a priority right now at least until I was strong enough to devour creatures on the level of the gods which in turn would boost my power drastically, perhaps the giants, then again that would win me a powerful enemy, Gaia, an overprotective mother with power far beyond anyone I have ever met, though Gaia was not one to fight herself, she never fought Zeus or Kronos, she was more the type of person to send others to do her bidding. He almost killed you, Hestia sighed, her eyes distant and full of emotion, 
I don't recall the Monkey King being this powerful, she admitted. Well, time changes everyone, even gods, I sighed. That it does, Hestia smiled, now, how about we go to Japan and try some sushi? She offered with a bright and contagious smile, her eyes beaming. Let's go, I nodded, grabbing her hand and teleporting to Japan, after all, we deserved this, a time to enjoy ourselves before the shitstorm coming our way destroyed our peace. Leto Point of View My baby was a traitor, Artemis and Apollo had tried to hide it from me, to shield me from the pain, but eventually, the rumors of one of my kids betraying Olympus had reached me. Was I angry? No, I couldn't, I loved my kids regarding of their choices, they were a part of me, they would always be a part of me, that was what it mean to be a mother, to love one's child no matter what, and while I had yet to interact with my son, I loved him. So, I did what any mother would have done, I went to Olympus and begged Zeus to forgive him, to understand, that no matter what he did, it was an ill-advised choice that my son was probably being manipulated by my despicable uncle, Kronos. But Zeus would hear none of that, he wanted Adam gone, no matter what I offered. Once again I was powerless to protect my babies, once again. I was useless. There is no pain, like the one a mother feels when losing her child, how could I hate something that had come from me, something that had formed and grown within me, how could I simply forget him? I couldn't, no matter how many times Artemis or Apollo told me it was for the best to simply forget him. They would never understand the love I felt, the lengths I would go for them, even if those lengths were limited by my weakness, I would die for them. Which is why I offered Hera, my life, if she convinced Zeus, I knew she had been dreaming of ending my life since the moment I had Apollo and Artemis, I knew she wanted to end my life. Unfortunately, even my life was not enough to save him, Olympus was on the hunt, and Adam was the target. Mother, you have to forget about him, Artemis repeated once again, he is far gone, he betrayed his kin, and now, he has to pay the price. Don't ask me to do that. I chuckled bitterly, I know you want to help me, but, you will never understand what I feel for him, for you. You have to be a mother to know what I feel, only a mother could understand, what it felt. Luke point of view. It had taken me some time, but after two weeks, I finally had the chance to have Percy alone with me. It had been harder than I had anticipated, with Percy being wary of me, it had been nearly impossible to enact my plan, but perseverance is the key, which is the reason why. I was now waking with Percy to the woods, with the excuse we were looking for something to fight. Percy, what do you think about the gods? I asked him, even now. I had a bit of hope, hope he would see the light, and join us, instead of dying. Nothing, Percy replied coldly. I hate them, I admitted with a bitter smile, I hate that they see us as disposable, that they don't care about us, but most of all. I hate how happy they are while we suffer which is why you betrayed Adam, Percy stated, his sword already unsheathed. I chuckled at that, you were the only one, to see beyond my mask, was him that important to you? I smirked, tell me, how did you find out the real traitor was me? He saved my mother, twice. Percy stated, he is my friend, and I trust in my friends to the bitter end. So simply out of loyalty, I chuckled, an idiot had seen through my plan, simply because he trusted Adam, perhaps that is your fatal flaw, blind less loyalty. You will pay for what you did, Percy hissed. Don't worry, after today, his name will be cleared. I laughed, but, unfortunately you will be dead before that happens, at that I summoned the beast I had selected to fight him, I hope you understand. I do what I do, for all of us. We deserve better, with that I walked away as Percy fought against the pit scorpion, in a battle he would never win, it was a shame, some many demigods would have to die, for my vision of a better future to happen. Chiron point of view. When Percy came to me, 
and asked me to follow him and Luke to the woods on a future date I was confused, and seeing my confusion the young demigod explained why, he suspected of Luke being the real traitor, so while I had my reservations I complied, and hid while the two kids walked deeper and deeper into the forest. Deep down, I wondered if I was wasting my time, following them. I knew Luke, I had practically raised the kid to the young warrior he was today, but there was something on how sure Percy sounded, that I couldn't help but stay. Then their conversation started. And all the doubts I had, about this little plan, disappeared, hearing how vocal Luke was about his hate for the gods, made everything clicked. Adam was innocent. Luke had played us all. Don't worry, after today, his name will be cleared. Luke laughed, but, unfortunately you will be dead before that happens, at that he summoned a massive pit scorpion, and I was forced to decide between running after Luke or helping Percy. I hope you understand. I do what I do, for all of us. We deserve better, Luke chuckled as he walked away. For now, Luke would escape. I had to save Percy, besides, stopping Luke was not my destiny. It was not my call, saving Percy it was, Percy don't let the scorpion scratch you, their poison is highly effective against demigods. I shouted, galloping to his aid. Chapter 74 News traveled fast, and so did the fact Luke had revealed he was the traitor, and I am not gonna lie or even try to hide it. I was happy, not because they would probably try to get me back, but because soon all of Olympus will regret having betrayed me. The question now was, was I going to follow Hestia if she decided she wanted to go back to Olympus, or would I part ways with her until I was strong enough to do something about the situation? I loved Hestia, she had been the one person that had always been there for me. I suppose the question now was, did I hate Olympus more than I loved Hestia? What do we do now? Hestia asked, breaking my depressing train of thought, with a warm smile, soon, Zeus will try to fix his mistake, meaning he will invite us back to Olympus, she added with a deep sigh. I looked at her perplexed as if something had finally clicked, not at her statement, but at something I couldn't fully comprehend, but in reality I didn't need to understand it. The important thing was that I knew now that wherever she went I would go with her without hesitating, like I also knew. She would never abandon me. I don't know, I breathed out, rubbing the sides of my head, I think it's more of, what do you want to do? Hestia looked at me for a second before she replied, I. I told you before I would stand by your side. I smiled, I know, that's why I love ya. I hugged her, making her giggle. So, we are going to reject his offer right? Hestia asked between arms, her eyes looking into mine. Yes, I answered, feeling a shadow of doubt crawling down my spine, I knew how much Hestia wanted peace, and everyone to be happy. She was just like that, a fire of love, and unfortunately for her, she had sided with me, someone that unlike her wanted to burn those who hurt me. Zeus' point of view. Luke had revealed himself as the traitor, meaning Adam was, innocent, Hestia and Hades had been right all along. Zeus we need Hestia back, Hera stated in concern, if Kronos is coming back, we will need every god available. Even Adam if the news about his ascension are true. I know, I sighed. The fastest way to get them back should be by apologizing, Hera offered, me, apologizing? At least to Hestia, if she comes back, her little hound dog will come back with her. Hestia is at fault for not obeying a simple command. I roared, I told her to come, and she deliberately disobeyed me. Hestia was where she was now because she had forgotten I ruled the skies. I ruled Olympus. Whatever the reason is. Right now we can't afford to be prideful in such trivial manners. Hera roared back, slamming her fist on her throne, I don't care who is right or who isn't. All I care is if we have or not enough power to stop Kronos and his army from rising again. 
I stood up fuming in anger and slapped her, don't you dare, to shout at me ever again. I will do as I please, Hera hissed, I am, even if you tend to forget it, the queen of Olympus, and I bow to no one, not even the king. Is that a challenge? I growled. Not that I don't like seeing a good show, Demeter interrupted as she entered the room, but Hera is right, we need Hestia and Adam back, without Hestia we are weaker, and Adam is a newly ascended god, which means he could help us more than any demigod could in war. I sighed, I have sent word I have pardoned them for their crimes. How can you forgive someone for something they didn't do? Demeter inquired. The Kronos situation is out of their record, I replied, but disobeying my orders, hiding from me and avoiding my punishment, for those crimes I have graciously offered them a royal pardon. I will look for them, Demeter sighed, otherwise we won't get them back. Artemis point of view. Adam was innocent, I had tried to kill my innocent brother. I had tried to end his life without any hesitation, what have I done? Sis, don't worry, you know Adam, he doesn't have in him to hate anyone, Apollo offered with a reassuring smile, if only he knew, how much Adam had changed, how much his once innocent gaze had turned into the eyes of a lurking predator. Apollo. I saw him, and I know the Adam we once knew is King Gone, I replied, holding my bow tight, his time in Tartarus changed him, the only person he stills looks fondly at is Hestia and we tried to hunt her down, he will never forgive us. I know we messed up, Apollo sighed, but everything with time heals, I would know. I'm the god of healing. So don't worry, if he doesn't forgive us I will kick his ass, until he does, he chuckled. I eyed him for a second, it will take a millennia before he forgets what we did, what we would have done. Well, if that's what it takes, is a good thing we are gods right? Apollo chuckled humorlessly. Immortality also means an opportunity to hold a grudge for all eternity, I added, my lips closing into a thin line. We failed our mother, we failed our brother, and there is nothing we can do about it anymore. Trust me sis, Apollo smiled, he will forgive us. I will make sure of that. Naive, I sighed, I know he won't forget all of this as easily as you wished he would because I wouldn't, because you wouldn't, we still haven't forgive what Hera did to our mother, and that happened a few millennia ago, our family is good a holding grudges, and he is our brother. Chapter, 75 Every god had one thing in common with one another, besides their godhood, and it was that each and every single one of them had a symbol of power, Poseidon had his trident, Hades his helmet. Hestia the hearth and its fire, something I as a god lacked. You seem distressed, Odin said, as he walked into my room, a smile forming on his face, is everything all right? It was more than obvious he knew what I was thinking, if something Odin was very good at reading people, and since the day I came back from my vacations in Asia, he had been keeping an eye on me, not much, I shrugged, a smirk flashing on my face. Good try, Odin smiled, his eye closing to accentuate his knowing smile even more, is it about the Greeks asking you two to come back? He asked. That's part of it, I nodded, rolling my eyes at him, it's more about the fact. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with my new status, and that for all the power I had gained I was still weak, or at least I felt like it. You really should stop selling yourself short, Odin chuckled in slight amusement, you are growing very strong, and in no time will catch up to us. It took Zeus ten years to defeat his father and even more time to train his body and powers to match Typhon in combat. It's remarkably scary how good you are at reading people, I chuckled. There is a reason I'm called the All-Father, Odin winked, now, as for your role, you have to remember we gods are not perfect. So don't be afraid to mess up everyone now and then, you have all the time in the world to figure out what path works for you best. Odin. I have a question, I sighed, since my fight against Sun Wukong, there was something that has bothered me, are you, stronger than Zeus or Sun Wukong? I asked. 
Tough question, Odin hummed, well, let's put it this way, do you know why Thor is called the strongest Norse god? He asked and I shook my head. Well, apart from the fact he is the strongest physically speaking, is because of his unbreakable will and massive talent, Odin explained, Thor is not very disciplined, so he doesn't train much, but even then, his power rivals mine. So Thor and you are around the same level? I asked, skepticism clear in my voice, that simply didn't sound right, I had fought Thor, and while yes, he was immensely powerful, his aura was not like Odin's or Sun Wukong's. <laughs> Odin chuckled, I can't see why you don't believe that, you see. Thor had to learn how to keep his power inside of him, unlike the Greeks or the Romans, we don't have a second giant form, we are what you see, he gestured to himself to make a point, but that doesn't make us any less god than you or Zeus are, he smirked, so instead of forcing ourselves into a weaker smaller form, we learn how to control our powers. And that is why you had Thor teaching me, I muttered, as I realized perhaps I had the power scale wrong in my head after all. Yes, Odin nodded with a satisfied smile, if Thor didn't actively contain his power, you would feel something similar to what you felt facing Sun Wukong, like him Thor has a wild animal-like aura. So Thor and Sun Wukong were around the same level, what about you? I turned to Odin once more, giving the man a long scrutinizing look. My aura is controlled, even when I let all my power roam free. Odin answered, unlike Thor or Sun Wukong's, my power doesn't come from an absurdly amount raw talent like they have, I have worked myself to the top, meaning that unlike those two I have a vastly superior control. He smirked proudly, I have sacrificed a lot to gain the power I have today, and I to have all the knowledge in the world, heck I almost killed myself just to see the forbidden runes of magic, offering myself as a sacrifice to see them. That sounds a bit too extreme, I chuckled nervously. Maybe it was. I mean, I pierced my own body with my spear and hanged myself from the branches of Yggdrasil, just to get a quick glimpse at the Norn's wisdom Odin chuckled. Was it worth it? I asked, and he nodded. It did, and I would do it again. No hesitation, Odin smiled. I chuckled. I don't think I would be able to give an eye or almost kill myself for power, who would have guessed you were so wild in your youth? My youth? Ha! <laughs> Joke's on you, I'm the same crazy guy, Odin grinned fiercely. Alright I have another question, how and where do I get my symbol of power? I asked. Well, you have various options, Odin hummed, I got mine as a gift. You did? I asked, perplexed as to who gave him such a weapon. Loki gave Gungnir to me as a gift, Odin nodded, though it was more of an apology gift. You see in one of his over-the-line pranks he had cut the beautiful golden hair of Sif and cursed her to be bald forever, as expected Thor and Sif got mad, so as I a punishment I forced him to go to the realm of the dwarves to find something as beautiful to replace the hair he had ripped from her head. On his journey, he approaches a group of dwarves known as the Avaldi brothers, who agree to help him by making a headpiece of fine gold for Sif, and enchant it to grow on her head, one thing was balding bullies, but making it permanent, I have a feeling Loki is the DC version of me, aka Darker. I'm all for a good prank, but cursing her to be bald for all eternity, that's rough, I sighed. It is, Odin nodded, Loki is not one to see lines, he only cares about himself, anyway, as he waited for the golden headpiece, he decided to win some points with me and asked the best blacksmiths on the realm to make a spear for me, to which the dwarves happily agree, forging Gungnir from the sunlight of their realm. So. I can go and commission a weapon there? I asked, partially excited with the prospect of exploring an entirely different world. You could, or you could go the Sun Wukong's route, by stealing your symbol of power, like he did, Odin chuckled. This marks the end of part 15 of the story, Percy Jackson, the God of Magic. Thank you for listening.
please like the video and hit the subscribe button to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.